What's up guys? Welcome back to a friend you never had. Um So today I'm going to share a story with you guys. I feel like this story will help you guys. I feel like this story will um give you a a, a better perspective of me. Um that's why I brought this this playlist. So today I'm going to share a story that I haven't really shared with a lot of people in my life. Um I just told my own girlfriend about this like when we was already dating for like a year. So um, cause it's a very personal story, but I feel like these stories have to be told. Like, this is what I want to do in life. And I just want to tell what I seen through my own eyes and what I understood. Um, so growing up as a kid, I had a real, real tough childhood, a really tough childhood. And, um, there was situations where I didn't really have a home. So I would live with my, with my dad's mother. And then I'll live with my mom's mother, then I'll live with my mom's sister, then I'll live with my mom's cousin, and then my dad's cousin. And it was just so crazy for me in my, you know, growing up as a child. That made me different as a kid. That made me observe things different because I couldn't act a certain way at this grandmother's house how I had to act at this, my other grandmother's house. I couldn't act like this in front of this set of cousins, in front of that set of cousins. So it helped me really become like a psychiatrist in kind of a way. I understood on how to act around certain people and I, I, I had a good understanding on how to understand people. So, um, you know, my mom, my, my dad had a lot of problems with the law and he was a hustler and my mom um, had a drug problem. My mom is a drug addict and she had a drug problem. So my my parenting was was kind of like I didn't grow up with two parents in the house. My dad's a great father. My dad raised me to be the man I am today, you know? And as a kid, it was a, it was a, I know a lot of kids that was in the same situation as me, but they didn't really know how to go about it, like how I did. But it wasn't always like that. In fifth, when I was in the fifth grade, my mom got clean. My mom was really clean and my mom got, you know, uh, her own apartment with two bedrooms and me and my little brother moved in with her. Um, my mother has two kids before she met my father, my older brother and sister. So everything was looking, everything was okay there, you know? Like for the first time I had my own room. And, you know, my mom was doing good. My mom was going to a you know, drug program. She was clean for a couple months. Um, my sister um, had a good job. She had her own apartment. She lived like a couple blocks down from us. And she had a family. She had two kids um, and she was pregnant, about to have a third kid. So at this moment, finally, I'm like, yo, like, you know, finally I really, I got a home. I got my own TV. I got, I'm stable for right now. You know, and it was like a great feeling, right? Before then, I was, it was chaos, you know? So finally things calmed down. My mother was motivated to get clean because she wanted to be around her grandkids, my sister's kids. And she was around, she was a great grandmother. and. Every day when we got up to go to uh, school, we used to stop at to see my, my nephews before school, me and my little brother, and my mom would be coming with us because my mom spent the whole day there taking care of my sister while she was pregnant and taking care of, you know, my, my nephew. So everything was going really good. My sister had the baby. It was a girl. Her name was Annalicia. Um, and, you know, a couple weeks later, my sister had to go back to work. So we all used to go to her apartment throughout the whole day, making sure the kids were good. And then we go back to, you know, my mom's crib. So everything was going solid, like I said. And uh, then it was one day, and this one day changed my life. Um, there was one day I woke up at like three in the morning. My mom was screaming. I'm like, yo, why is she screaming? She was screaming. She kept on seeing my granddaughter crying out. So I, as I opened my door, my older brother runs out, like sprints out the house. So he sprints out and I'm like, yo, what is going on? So I'm like, mom. And my mom was so zoned out, like she didn't see me there. She's like crying, crying, crying. So she, my mom's getting dressed while she cries and she leaves. She told me my brother to stay there. So I'm like, yo, what the hell happened? See, my niece was having seizures since since she was born so we'll have to take her back to the hospital and then take her you know back home and then two weeks later take her back to the hospital so i'm like yo i think something happened with a seizure like i think she had a seizure situation 
and it wasn't. Um, this the story I'm going to tell you what happened is but what I've been told and what I had to I had to understand. So the baby was crying in the middle of the night, and my sister's boyfriend was annoyed. Kept, he, they said that he kept on getting up and he got annoyed. This is the cops told us. He got annoyed and he shook her while she was asleep, like while she was crying and shook her too hard and killed her. Now, after that situation, they called the ambulance. Uh, he told my sister that she had a seizure and something happened. So my sister called the ambulance ambulance comes the cop comes when they go to the hospital it's not about saving the baby or hoping the baby is okay my sister and her boyfriend went straight into investigation so their investigation all night i'm home i'm calling i don't know what's going on and they charged they arrested uh, my sister's boyfriend with first degree murder and then the rest of my sister i'm not sure what charge but basically saying she was a witness to the situation so right there and there the first thing that goes through my mom's mind is who's gonna take the kids my mom can't get custody because my mom can't have legal custody because of her history of drugs my brother couldn't have custody because he's only 16 so the state took them and within that night my mom lost her grandkids Literally lost a niece. Oh my, her granddaughter died. Lost a daughter. Daughter going to prison, and everything just went downhill. And the next couple of days, we had the news trying to come to the house, and the news like harassing us. And my brother lost it. My older brother lost it. He winds up going to jail later that week for assault. And my mom got back on drugs, and. She was doing great, being clean, and that one day, just that one little moment I had in my life where I had a mom that was clean and our family came together, just was crushed that one day. So my goal from there on out, when I was right there at that moment, was to give my mom that feeling again in, in life, to give her a feeling of grandkids and to give her better opportunities in life. Um, to have a house so she can come to, to have grandkids for her, to help her get clean, to help my little brothers have a role model. Everything just went straight down the hill that day and we lost a bigger brother, we lost a bigger sister. So I wanted to be the best brother I can be for my little brothers. I wanted to be the best son I can be for my mom. But to this day, my mom is out of it. My mom's never been the same since that day. That's why you guys don't really see her on the vlogs. I don't really see my mom. So I lost a brother, a mother, a sister, my nephews, a home, everything. So the reason why I'm telling you this story is because I wake up every day and I know what it's like not to have these things. So these things motivate me to have them. I found the perfect girlfriend that I know is gonna be the perfect mother for my kids. I know I found a, a way for myself to become, I seen how life just can change in one day. So that's why I wake up every day and I attack it 100%. If it's raining, snowing, or any freaking hurricane, whatever. I'm still doing what I gotta do because I'm focused on making sure I can have a successful family for myself. And and then this story, these stories that I have built up in me, I, it motivated me to make it in life. My goal was to be an athlete so I can get on ESPN and have my own documentary. That was my life, that was my lifetime goal. That was my whole life. Like everybody wanted me to go to pro and stuff. That sounds cool, but my life goal was get a scholarship, graduate college, and get on ESPN so my story can be told. But I found a way better way to tell my story and it's through this YouTube, it's through this camera. So that day made me. You have a story that made you too. And take pride in that story and let that story build you for the better because it can build you for the worst. For my older brother, it built him for the worst. He, he, 
he took that story and took anger out. I took that story and that day and I took, I made passion with it. I made getting on the court. If there was a ball and we play basketball and there was a loose ball, I dove for that ball because they don't know what I'm, what I'm going through in my life. They don't know that, you know? They don't know after that day, my mom got back on drugs, didn't have a stable home again. My happy, my happy land was gone. My happiness was gone. They didn't know that, you know? And I made sure my pain was felt. I put everything I had onto any sport and anything I did, you know? And that's what I'm doing on YouTube now. I want to bring my all to this. I want to help as much as people as I can with this, you know? So that's the day that changed my life. Um, and after that day, I made greater goals for myself and Sorry guys, it's just hard to tell that story because I don't really share that story. It's uh, something I didn't want to talk about even in school with counselors and stuff, you know, so. But it's bigger than me. This story has to be told. You guys have to, you guys have to understand that anything is possible, you know. Went from that to a stable, a stable dorm room in Delaware with everything paid off for me. Uh, graduated college. I'm here now, young entrepreneur, still chasing dreams and stuff. So everything I wanted to do, I did it. And you can do it too. Take your story, let that story make you, let it make it, use it as your motivation, use it as your passion, use it as your, your, your way to get up and get things done. And get up and, and attack your dream. Use that, use your story. You have a story, use it, I'm telling you. This is just one of the stories. This is basically the story that just made me finally spark. It was like that spark. But from there, I have a thousand more stories and a thousand more tragic things that happened to me. And I knew that I can just use these stories and it can just build me to be a stronger version of myself. And I can use it for power instead of an excuse. So use that for yourself. And you'll see life, you'll have way more benefits. It's always going to be, it's, it's, it's never good. Pain doesn't last forever. These these moments don't last forever. They can make you or break you. Let it make you. You're going through something right now. Let it make you. Let it make you. Like right now, I'm going, last year is not as bad as this year. You guys saw what I went through last year with this football injury and stuff. And my whole life changed. But I let it make me. I'm a way different person now. So, I'm happy I brought this story to you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the, this video. If you want me to talk about any topic, just comment below or just email me. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you for still being here and listening to me. And thank you for letting me open up because you guys make me feel a lot better in life. And I want to make you feel a lot better. I want to make you guys happier. I'm happy that I can come to this camera and let you guys know the story and share this with you guys and, and know that I can help you guys, you know? So let your story make you. Peace.